Today, it has been popularly reported that the city of Bani Walid has been occupied by militias. The city of Bani Walid in Libya is the third city to have this treatment applied to it. Last year, in October of 2011, the city of Sirte was encircled, was pounded by NATO jets, missiles, and drones. Hospitals were attacked by NATO. Apartment buildings were attacked by NATO. In violation of international law, the Geneva Conventions, and their own mandate to protect civilians. Civilians were definitely killed by NATO there unnecessarily. Plus, the war was largely over. It was psychological punishment to make sure that Hitler's history was written by the victors. Then shortly thereafter, a black township, uh, now Libya has a population of New York City, six million people, maybe only five million of them are native Libya's the rest are expatriate. The Syria had a population of at least 50,000. It was a, a showcase of Libya because it was Gaddafi's hometown. It is totally unrecognizable as a city now. It was utterly decimated. Um, and the people are blameless. Uh, then the city to the, now, I, uh, if you look at a map of Libya, this is the neighbor city to Misrata. Misrata was the uh, first city in the rebellion. Uh, and this city was pounded. And it was a, a very intense fight. And uh, commanders in Gaddafi's army warned that if they uh, weren't able to subdue Misrata, they were basically um, ace out and would lose the conflict. So they fought desperately on both sides. And, um, and uh, from Tawerga, uh, rockets were fired. It's a black town. It's about 25 to 30,000 people. Again, a country of 6 million. These are top 20 cities probably in Libya. Libya. Uh, even Tawerga. Tawerga is gone now. It's been utterly eradicated by the Mizratans, by a brigade called the Purgers of Black Skins and Slaves. Uh, certainly they had the justification to be angry. But these are war crimes rivaling the scale of uh, Sarajevo or Srebrenica, um, you know, in terms of the population. They're severe, severe crimes. And the worst part is that they are uh, armed by NATO uh, when peace could have been achieved. And they were allowed to occur in Syria with NATO's collusion to the point where Obama, Clinton, Sarkozy, Cameron, these people, if it was Nuremberg, would be hung. Uh, Rice, Anders Fogg Rasmussen. Um, of course, that kind of justice is unlikely to come, and I'm not personally advocating it. But these are very serious war crimes. Tuerga was eradicated. The blacks there, there's racism in Libya. Gaddafi held it in check. The racism has come back. There's a lot of mistakes about black workers being considered to be uh, mercenaries, which uh, whether there were uh, black volunteers from Africa to help Gaddafi, because Gaddafi was popular in many parts of Africa, and uh, we won't go into the details of that, but I mean, these blacks are being collectively punished, simple, innocent black workers as well. Uh, uh, women professionals under Gaddafi that were known to have been arrogant towards men because they were high in the pecking order are being uh, collectively punished in ways which I care not to describe. Um, uh, but now, after Tawerga was utterly effaced from the earth, we sat by and allowed it to happen again in ben, Beni Walid. In Beni Walid, uh, the human rights groups begged that it not be conducted. Sober-minded people in Libya who realized that this country can get back on its feet. We don't want to forgive or forget um, the false humanitarian front for um, creating a wedge between Tunisia and Egypt to keep the Middle East from radicalizing against the U.S. The bubble of Washington where the press, the, the uh, Congress, and big business all live in a bubble with very little uh, diversity of voices in it. Uh, many, many facts about Libya. Uh, have been attempted to get in the mainstream press. So, for example, the fact that Libya had the highest standard of living, I don't think I've seen that yet in a single U.S. publication. And this is something that we've made available to them. U United Nations Human Development Index has made available to them. The spoke of the Libyan government tried to explain it to them. It's in the CIA World Factbook. It's not controversial and it has not ever been mentioned. Uh, the assumption is there's some sort of stereotype. Uh, 
And uh, the fact is that uh, Libya did very well under Gaddafi in the beginning, from 69 to 75. Sam rose dramatically, education, health care. Uh, and it was an autocratic police state, yes, but it was peace could have been achieved. And this bubble is what prevented it from being achieved, an echo chamber. Um, and if you don't do real research, that's what you'll do. Even if you are a citizen journalist, you'll look for journalism, pull it together, and make your case. But you have to go deeper than journalism. You have to go to real research. You have to read history. You have to look at statistics. You have to ask questions. You have to produce something new and original, or you will simply perpetuate the bubble chamber, except this time your bubble chamber will be one echo chamber in a bubble of um, anti-establishment um, information. So now in Bani Walid, the city was encircled, massively pounded by its worst enemies, Mizrata, which is a hundred-year-old rivalry with Bani Walid, hard, filled with hate, they came along with Islamic extremists to finish the job, thinking that Bani Walid was a city sheltering loyalists. Loyalists is a funny word, and um, most of the people who want to try to move forward in Libya do not want to reimpose a green revolution on them. Most of the people in Libya simply want their own place at the table and to try to get a new system functioning again. The largest tribe in Libya comes from uh, Bani Wali, the Warfala, one-sixth of the population. These people are in modern Libya, in Tripolitania, where most of the people live. Tribal affiliation is no longer the primary uh, identification of many people. It's a stereotype, the 140 or 150 tribes. But when you go and attack their traditional capital, you do inflame their blood, just as whatever you're from. If you saw this happen to your hometown of your parents, it would inflame your blood. So we're driving them back in time uh, by allowing this to happen. And it was the central government that ordered this. And I'm going to post the article by a EU human rights award-winning journalist who is said to save Libya, save Bonnie Walid. Russia tried to simply have a call for calming the situation down. The U.S. refused to do it because the people, the rascals, if you'll forgive me for saying so, the villains, the scoundrels at the top, Obama, Clinton, and Rice, and they may actually be, uh, think that they're virtuous people, uh, but their actions um, are serious war crimes. They permit serious war crimes to occur. And they know that they're, uh, you know, not their lives are at stake. That would be nice if they knew that, because it would stop them from doing these things, but their reputations are at stake. So they're allowing this to occur, because they don't want to see they believe that by acting harshly and brutally, they can prevent a civil war. They can make Libya look good. But in fact, the opposite will occur. It's, it's stupid. Uh, and it's a war crime. And it's on par with Sarajevo or Srebrenica. City encircled, pounded uh, uh, by its worst enemies, ordered by the central government, foolishly. Um, people protesting from all over the world to calm the situation down, and today the city fell. So this is a reenactment of Sirte and Tewerga, and it is uh, the United States is sitting on its hands when it could have stopped all of these atrocities. Virtually every life in Libya is directly the responsibility of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. I'm an American. If I was a Brit, I might take Cameron to task. Sarkozy had a lot to do with it. Um, but we have to look to our leadership. The U.S., if without U.S. support, all of this would have played out completely differently. The U.S. is pivotal and key. The Saudi royal family are now guilty of war crimes. The Emir of Qatar is now guilty of severe war crimes and mass death of civilians. Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey is guilty of war crimes and the severest forms of murder, of mass murder of civilians. Now, every time I make a presentation, I try to present a solution. But this time, I am utterly speechless. The solution is you contact your representatives. You do your research. Find your, your place in stopping this bubble where no information is allowed to come in. Because if people knew what was really going on, people in general would 
cry out in horror just as we did in Vietnam. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.